Hello and welcome back and today is our hardware review of the brand new QNAP TS453D. This is their latest generation of four bays for prosumer and business users alike. It arrives with a lot of hardware under the hood and a lot of features that we've talked about in previous videos but now we properly get to focus on. Now today's video is going to be as much as possible about the hardware. I will be talking about a number of the software features of this device, but there is a full software review coming very, very soon in a matter of days. So I strongly recommend that if you are interested in the software and you already know about the hardware, maybe check if that video has gone live. But otherwise, today I want to talk about why this is such a big jump for QNAP in terms of their hardware in 2020. <laughs> The 453D is easily one of the best units they've done for a long time. It's not perfect and there are a few things about it that may not win you over. Like any NAS brand, they have their priorities, they've gone for their design choices, and I know there's at least two things in this product that I'm less than thrilled about. Everything else I love, I'm like 96% about this device, but I'd be lying if I say it's perfect. So what is it about this device that's got me bowled over? Well, first and foremost, it's got it all. If you're looking for something in a network attached storage device, and particularly a network attached storage device that wants you to be able to work in the way that best serves your network and hardware environment, you're going to be hard pushed to find better than this. It arrives with internal architecture of an Intel Celeron processor, J1, or, um, J4125. Um, it's quad core 2.0 to 2.7 gigahertz with DDR4 memory as well, 4 gig by default that can be upgraded to 8. It already arrives with a good level of internal hardware. That internal hardware, 4K transcoding, virtualization, embedded graphics will allow you to not only transcode 1080p and 4K natively, but also will cover a lot of the bases in Plex Media Server. But I do have a Plex Media Server test video on this going live very soon. The software, I'm sorry, the CPU also opens the door to AES NI encryption. Its floating point means that multitasking is made considerably more efficient than before in any other device and that CPU also allows greater network interface ports and better handling of the uh, internal media and external speeds that this device can perform. It arrives with support with that DDR4 memory, 4 and 8 gig, and it arrives with that memory at 2400 megahertz. Um, the device itself is a compact 4 bay chassis, and although the software QTS um, is currently available uh, to access via your web browser with lots of mobile apps, uh, for iOS and Android as well as desktop applications, it also has the HDMI output of HD Station that allows you to access all your digital assets in a very intuitive manner in the way you want over HDMI. Now we'll talk about that later on on the rear there, but let's talk about the hardware we're seeing here. We're seeing a very similar chassis to what we've seen before on the likes of the 453B and BE, but this device arrives with a price point of around 520, 530 without the tax. So if you're buying it in the UK, you're looking at a price of around 630, including tax, which isn't cheap for a four bay. So we wanna know whether you're gonna get your money's worth. Now, this is a device that's gonna be on for days, weeks, months, or even years at a time. So we've got plenty of ventilation on all sides, all the way around the device. We've got the ventilation there, we've got a big old fan there on the rear, we've got the vents on the bottom. The front panel, on the other hand, can be removed very easily. There's a lock based on the side, once you undo the lock, you can get inside this device, pop that down there, and we can take a good look about what's inside this. Now it's the four SATA bays inside there, and each one of those SATA bays supports up to 16 TB of storage. So that's 64 terabytes of potential storage before your RAID or a RAID 0. It supports RAID 5 and RAID 6, of course, as well as a couple of RAID 1s if you choose. And on top of that, each of those bays are click and load, so no screwdriver required. So you can get your drive tray, remove the sides, pop in your drive, get your trays, put them on, stick them on the sides, and wallet, you're done. It's that straightforward to install hard drives inside this. You can run it with a single hard drive if you like, but you can install multiple hard drives if you choose as well. And you can add drives as you go and expand your storage pool or your RAID 
to increase storage over time. So if the price of the device is a little bit much for you, you can scale back your storage and then add drives as your budget allows later on. Now, those individual bays do support two and a half inch media as well in the form of SSDs connected via SATA. And SSDs are currently available commercially in around about four terabytes. But those four terabyte bays, uh, sorry, four terabyte SSDs are soon to become eight TB maximums um, of SATA commercially, thanks to QLC NAND becoming more and more readily available. Once you remove all four of those click and load trays, we can take a good look inside. And in there, we can see those four SATA dual power and data connections there on the rear, no loose cables, and that big rear mount fan on the rear pulling air over the drives in real time and keeping things lovely and cool inside and again all that passive ventilation around the edge is working with an active fan with its rpm set to automatic will benefit the efficiency of this device because heat equals degradation on both your speed and performance and the internal hardware remember days weeks months years at a time on the inside of the device we can see that l shape there is our memory module slot with four gig of ddr4 already pre-installed and an empty slot waiting to upgrade this to eight gigabytes of memory. Now, if we look at the rear of this device, we can see a lot of connections. Let's bring that somewhere where the light isn't gonna go crazy and ruin it. Let's bring it there, there we go. Now, the device has got that rear mounted fan. And again, that RPM can be set automatically or manually as you so choose or whatever best fits your situation. But bear in mind that the hard drive you use inside are almost certainly going to be the thing that's generating the most noise rather than the system. But that is a big old fan and it is a metal internal so it does make a little bit of a hum. Um, on the side here we've got USB ports and alongside that front mounted USB port there for USB backups. And again always useful, check out my other videos. Um, we've got another USB 3 port there and three USB 2s. Now I've already mentioned this in my unboxing video, but that's one of the things that I'm a little disheartened by, the utilization of USB 2 in a 2020 device. I get it, I understand why they did it. You know, keyboard, video, mouse, there's a lot of peripherals that people use on QNAPs that don't need USB 3 power. And if you're gonna to try to find ways to keep this device affordable for people, that's a good place to start. But USB 2 just seems so old hat, and I swear the price difference between 3 and 2 cannot be that much in 2020. Even the power draw can't be that significant that this proves to be a problem. And if you're going to be utilizing QNAP's expansions, or you're going to be using QNAP's USB to 5GBE um, bus powered adapter, having two USB 3 ports there is a little bit limiting in the long run, particularly that expansion one, but also with the um, utilization of the adapter. And I haven't even touched on the fact that this device um, does arrive with an external power brick, which means that it doesn't have that PSU inside, so no heat being generated inside, and in the event of your PSU failing, you haven't got to muck around and start screwing the device apart or sending the whole unit away. You can just send the PSU. It's included in the three years manufacturer's warranty. And if you extend the warranty of this device to five years, you can still include the PSU in that. It's just rolled in there, so it's not that bad. Um, that's quite handy if you ask me. And I don't understand why people have such a bother with internal PSUs. Um, so inside um just next to the usb ports we can see those two lan ports there and i'm pleased to say both of them are 2.5 gbe so you are looking at uh, 2.5 gigabit ethernet 2.5 times that which you find in typical devices and um, so up to 250 megabytes each and you can link aggregate them to get increased speed link aggregation or port trunking or load balancing to a lesser degree that all basically means about pulling them together it's just how and if it's turn-based or they're working together. It is supported on this device as well as that adapter that I mentioned. We have an HDMI 2.0 port there, which is bloody useful. So you're looking at 4K for that um, dedicated HDMI port that we just discussed, meaning if you're gonna run a surveillance standalone system with a keyboard, keyboard video and mouse setup, you can have more simultaneous cameras on your camera feed and over 4K be able to see them a lot more fluidly. On top of that, if you want to watch some of your 4K media with as close to zero latency as possible, use the HDMI out and the myriad of applications that allow you to watch all of your media um, on your local TV and use you know, the mobile phone app that's completely for free to watch your media or use the infrared remote controls that QNAP sell or just use a Bluetooth remote with a USB dongle. Again, lots of ways in which you can control media 
from the comfort of your sofa or from a desktop. You can even run a virtual machine and turn this into a standalone computer. Linux using Ubuntu or a sort of Windows VM. And all the while, this can still be accessed by multiple users via the internet or via the network, as long as they've got permission and you've got the right security credentials. All of them can access their own dedicated QTS network and graphical user interface environments all at the same time as the HDMI port. It is a damn fine device. Now, at the top there, we've got a PCIe slot. This allows you to upgrade this device further down the line. One of the things I like about this device is the fact that it's upgradable in so many ways. You can upgrade the memory. You can upgrade the network interface port with that USB adapter. You can upgrade your network port with link aggregation, but you can also upgrade with this PCIe slot. It allows you to add PCIe upgrade cards that are allow you to have 10 GBE. They allow you to add a SATA M2 uh, SSD cache NVMe SSD cache. They allow you to utilize the SSDs that you install inside those for raw storage. There is even combo cards that are supported by QNAP in the QM2 series that allow you to have a combination of 10 GBE and uh, SSD media on a single card. Now, this leads me to the second thing I'm a bit put out by on this device. It does arrive with PCIe Gen 2 times 2 Now, the 2-bay arrived with PCIe Gen 2 times 4 which I'm still confused by, but the 4-bay surely is more deserving of 2 times 4 given that PCIe Gen 2 times 2 will give you about 1,000 megabits, um, uh, sorry, 1,000 megabytes through PCIe. So, if you're using 10 GBE, that's going to max out that PCIe connection internally. And if you use SSDs, bear in mind that NVMe SSDs should really be putting out more than a thousand each anyway in terms of write. So you may be bottlenecking yourself if you don't use the right cards for this system or utilize a card that is more out there than the system itself. And therefore, all the speed of 10 GBE and the speed of the NVMe instantly gets bottlenecked in the PCIe. So just be aware of the cards you use inside this device but it still has that upgrade ability and you still have lots of options open to you. And thanks to the inclusion of 2.5 GBE, there's still a hell of a lot that you can do with this device. Now, why should you buy it? Well, if not for any of the other reasons I've just listed, I would say it's because it's one of the most future-proof NASes I've seen this tier for a long time. We are very used to devices at the lower tiers, the ARMs, the Realtekes, the Marvel um, type NASes, these are ones where the hardware is very, very lacking and it arrives with a glass ceiling on day one. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got ones with your Intel cores and your Xeons and your four PCIe upgrades and your 64 or 128 gig of memory. Yes, they've got a lot more future-proofing and upgradability, but they cost the moon. We are talking thousands upon thousands of pounds. This is a device that arrives at the halfway point between zero and a thousand, give or take, uh, without the tax. And... It allows you to upgrade considerably within its lifetime in terms of the warranty, the memory, the network interface ports, and with that PCIe, whatever way best suits you. And with the added benefit that you can interact with your data on this with mobile apps, with web browsers, both over the network and the internet, as well as the ability to access directly on this device. You can connect a 2.5, 5 or 10 GBE cable directly into those ports from a PC and interact with it. Sticking a 10 GBE card you've now got something you can edit photos and videos on directly and then have that system working with the hard drive storage inside. If you get one of those combo cards with 10 GBE and, M and, and the SSD bays inside, remember that yes, you might be sharing the PCIe with two very fast connections, but if you're not using them at the same time, if you're editing directly on the SSDs, there's a way to leverage that speed accordingly. But that's more about your setup. For me personally, I like the hardware inside this device, and I do think, as far as NASes go, this is the best 4-bay in this tier that QNAP have put out for a very long time. If you agree, let me know. If you don't, let me know as well. And if you have enjoyed this video, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe, and do check out the video in the description to NAS Compares below. And of course, visit the guys at span.com for your NAS needs. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.